Calcite scaling on the CO2 YVUR for energy simulation. Hi everyone, I'm Patricia. I'm a reservoir engineer at Petrobras and PhD student at Herwatt Watt University. My PhD project investigates calcite scaling on the CO2 YVUR. My supervisors are Professor Eric Mackay and Professor Ken Sorby. Scale predictions and scale prevention in carbonate reservoirs under water alternating gas flooding are challenging due to the rock's reactivity in the presence of water and CO2, and because calcite deposition is sensitive to variations in many properties, such as pressure, temperature, flow rate, and CO2 concentration. Significant variations in fluid parameters are expected in producer wells under CO2 YGUR and these variations may significantly change the scaling potential of the produced water. In addition, many difficulties and limitations are faced during scale removal operations and prevention treatments, so it's recommended to develop complementary solutions for scale prevention. The main goal of this project is to understand how reservoir management can affect geochemical reactions inside the reservoir and brine composition near production wells. The main purpose of this study I'm presenting today is to understand the geochemical behavior during water and gas flooding, investigate how parameters like pressure and flow rate contribute to scale occurrence and how we can optimize them to reduce or minimize scale risk. Regarding the methodology, this analysis is undertaken by reservoir flow simulation coupled with geochemical modeling. The software used is JAM from the CMG group with the Wallery database. The model simulates a laboratory linear flood with the rock divided into 50 grid blocks. We have low CO2 in the reservoir, light oil, desulfated water injection, and calcite as the rock mineral. Only the incision reactions related to calcite and CO2 are considered in this model. The scale potential is measured by calculating the saturation ratio. Formation water and injected water compositions are based on published data, but only the primary ions in the reactions are defined, which are hydrogen, calcium, sodium, and chloride. Bicarbonate concentration is calculated by the chemical equilibrium equations. A pressure sensitivity test was performed in two reservoir pressure scenarios, testing three different producer well bottom hole pressures in each scenario. An injection flow rate sensitivity test was carried out in two lag injection scenarios, the first considering the same water volume injected by cycle, and the second considering the same injection time by cycle. Five different water injection flow rates were tested in each scenario. Analyzing downhole calcium concentration, the pressure sensitivity test concludes that pressure does not affect brine composition during the first water flooding, as there is no significant amount of CO2 at this stage, and reactions in aqueous systems are not sensitive to pressure variations due to low water compressibility. During the gas flooding, as BHP increases, calcium concentration increases, as there is more CO2 dissolved in water at higher pressures, dissolving more calcite and releasing calcium and bicarbonate in brine. It entails a brine with a higher saturation ratio at surface conditions. During the second water flooding, brine composition in equilibrium conditions is the same as in the first water flooding. Nevertheless, during the water breakthrough, the water front is more reactive, as more water flows through the reservoir and more CO2 is in the system. Then, calcium concentration in brine varies as a function of calcite dissolution during the water breakthrough. Analyzing downhole calcite dissolution, the impact of pressure is relevant in the second water front, the most reactive one, and a minimum amount of calcite dissolves when the bottom hole pressure, BHP, is at the CO2 minimum miscibility pressure, TMMP. Above the MMP, which is 2,900 psi, 
As the BHP goes up, the calcite solution increases due to the higher CO2 concentration in the brine. Below the MMP, the residual oil saturation increases and CO2 partitions for longer into brine. Then, mineral solution increases somewhat as BHP falls. This increase is only significant once BHP drops below the PSAT, which is 2200 psi, as the residual oil saturation increases markedly, extending the CO2 partition into brine. Returning to the downhole calcium concentration in the second waterfront, the most reactive front, during the water breakthrough for the same water per volume injected, the higher the PHP, the higher the calcium concentration in brine, which means a higher saturation ratio at surface conditions. Between the MMP 2900 psi and the PSAT 2200 psi, the system reaches equilibrium by injecting a smaller volume of water, reducing scaling risk during the water breakthrough. For the model proposed, managing the producer BHP closer to the MMP by the time of the water breakthrough can reduce scaling risk and minimize mineral dissolution near the producer well without impacting the oil recovery. Analyzing the injection flow rate sensitivity test, brine is less saturated in ions during the water flooding, which leads to a lower scale potential. A lower minimum inhibitor concentration is expected in squeeze treatments. Nevertheless, water production is higher during water flood, so the minimum inhibitor concentration is reached faster and the squeeze treatment can last shorter. The producer well water cut is greater, so the risk of high mass precipitation is higher in case of deposition. On the other hand, brine is more saturated in ions during gas flooding, which leads to a higher scale potential, so a higher minimum inhibitor concentration is expected in squeeze treatments. However, water production is lower during gas flooding, so it can take longer to reach the minimum inhibitor concentration and the squeeze treatment can last longer. The water cut of the producer well is lower, so the mass precipitation will be lower in case of deposition. The graph shows downhole calcium concentration per water per volume injected in the producer block for the scenario considering the same water volume injected by cycle. During the water breakthrough of the second water front, the most reactive front, at 19.5 water per volume injected, calcium molality and calcite saturation index at surface conditions decreased by almost 50% from the lowest to the highest water injection flow rate. It happens because the water mass throughput per time is higher at higher flow rate, so CO2 is consumed faster and the system gets a steady state sooner. Then, during the water breakthrough, the higher the water injection flow rate, the lower the calcium and bicarbonate concentrations in brine, which means a lower scale risk. Looking at the injection flow rate sensitivity test, considering the same injection time by cycle, the graphs show downhole calcium concentration and production well water cut in the producer block per time when the fluid injected changes from CO2 to water. For the highest water injection flow rate, calcium concentration varies for 13 hours after the water breakthrough. This means that reactions occur for 13 hours until the system reaches a steady state. For the lowest water injection flow rate, calcium concentration takes 90 days to reach a steady state after the water breakthrough. This analysis shows that the reactions occur later than the water breakthrough as the water injection flow rate declines. The water cut increases when the water front reaches the producer well. So the longer the system takes to react and reach a steady state, the longer the brine composition remains highly saturated in ions while the water cut grows increasing the scale risk by the time of the water breakthrough. 
I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thanks CMG for providing software licenses, Petrobras for sponsoring my project, Harriet Watt University, Fast Group sponsors, and Energy Simulation for the opportunity to present my study. Thank you.